please. So very good afternoon to everyone present here. I welcome to the fourth session of the on role of business in sustainable development. Thank you so much for joining us for today's session. Today we are presenting a session on sustainability from philosophical perspective. Presently by our beloved director, Dr. Kushitam Bal, Professor and Director, Avi Institute of Management, Bangalore. Before we go further, I want to give you some instructions. So I request all of you to follow these instructions for the smooth running of the uh, program. So your active participation is very important to us throughout the session. So please be with us and keep chatting with us. So right now, I have all of you on, I have everyone on mute to avoid background noise that they may distract you from listening to the session. Throughout the presentation, my co-host, Professor Anita De Silva, will be managing the chat functionality. You can enter your questions in the chat box throughout the presentation. We will bring them up during the presentation, and we will also have time for question and answer at the last uh, 15 minutes of time. You will have question and answer, so that time, all your questions will be reading to the sir and sir will be answering all the questions. So it's a time to start the session. So before I request Dr. Kuchitam Bansa to start the session, it's my privilege to introduce Dr. Kuchitam Bansa to all of you. Dr. Kuchitam is an engineer with a rich experience of around 20 plus years in academia and industry, both in domestic as well as international. He completed PGDM from Melbourne Business School, Australia, which is one of the top 10 schools in the world. An MBA from Manaj University, one of the top universities in the world. He had a rich part-time entrepreneur experience of around 10 plus years in the food processing industry. He is on the expert advisory and editorial panel of many institutions and universities NGOs and journals. Dr. Bum has presented and published 26 research articles in national and international literary journals and has undertaken several consultancy assignments and funded research projects. Dr. Bum was conferred with Education Leader of this year, 2020 Pan India, as a part of National Education Excellence Award in 2020. Enterprising Academic Leader of the Year, South India, as a part of National Education Excellence Award in 2018. He was conferred with Distinguished Educator Award in 2013. In 2015, he was awarded as the Best Director of a B School in Karnataka as a part of Education Excellence Award 2015. He is a member of many associations and institutional bodies. He was elected as the Fellow of World Academy of Productivity Sciences at Beijing, China. Recently, he is also a research fellow of Institute of Productivity, UK. Dr. Bang is offering management consultancy services to local businesses, institutions, and entrepreneurs as well. Dr. Bang has undertaken several funded projects in various domains. He has completed a hard work export in collaboration with Pearson Global and Eureka Education Group UK on future of learning and many moves in the area of design thinking, leadership, negotiation, and so on. He has been training professionals on building entrepreneurial skills, design thinking, leadership skills, and yoga. The ultimate stress reliever and the most promising tool to achieve work-life balance. He has completed the foundation course in yoga from BBAU, a central university, Lucknow, and is qualified yoga instructor certified by Indian Yoga Association. Currently, he is working as professor and director at the institute, that is our Institute of Management, a prestigious standalone autonomous B School of Excellence at Bangalore, which is part of prestigious RV group of institutions. Sir, on behalf of our institute, RV Institute of Management, and all the participants present here, I take this opportunity to welcome you for the session and request you to start the session. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Noor, so much for the generous introduction, and I thank all the audience also for their participation in this wonderful MDP on sustainability. I have been hearing the discussions that have been going on since the last uh, couple of days. Uh, first session, wherein uh, my friend Naresh Tagi uh, gave the perspective from the corporate side how sustainability is seen from the corporates, Indian corporates uh, as on date, right? What are the things that the corporates are doing to ensure that the sustainability agenda is given the, uh, the required attention, right? And then on the second day, I think uh, the Madam Lalita from Pondicherry University uh, I talked about <clears throat> the sustainability from the marketing perspective, right? From the corporate down to the functional perspective. How sustainability, because sustainability is, is something which has to be percolated down to the last man in the organization, right? That's the whole point, right? So from the corporate, we came down to specific function as an illustration and we took marketing as uh, the function and what all efforts are being done by the companies to ensure that the sustainability is being taken care of within that function, within that function. And then I think yesterday, sir uh, spoke about uh, you know, the sustainability from the emerging scenarios, pandemic as a, as a black swan event never happened before. We don't know whether it is going to happen again in near time, right? It's one of a rare event under those circumstances. What are the efforts that we need to take to ensure that the sustainability agenda is given the required attention, right? So after hearing all the discussions and that are happening back and forth through Q&A, I, I somewhere I found that sustainability is not something very new. Our ancestors have been practicing sustainability from the day one when the civilization started. Right. And somewhere we have to study this concept sustainability as a broad concept from the philosophical perspective. What are our Shastras, Puranas, scriptures, ancient Indian scriptures, Indian knowledge system in broad is talking about sustainability, right? So that is where I requested Noor, right? Please give me a slot. And I would like to talk about sustainability from the philosophical perspective. Okay. And here, what I did was, you know, I tried to look into the various scriptures. I tried to study them, went a bit deep to understand, you know, how those philosophies are talking about sustainability. So I looked into uh, some of the Vedas. Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita. I also looked into the Patanjali Muni's uh, Yoga Sutra. Okay. And also <clears throat> the, the Buddhism philosophy on sustainability. Right. What are they all talking about sustainability? And also, you know, it is not that only intelligent people can talk about sustainability. I tried to look at some of the practices that are followed by our tribals even today, right? So I looked into various research articles and tried to look into the aspects, how they took sustainability as an agenda, how they inculcated, how they brought in the sustainable practices into their living, right? So-called uneducated tribal people, from India, from Andaman Nicobars, that a tribe called Onge, O-N-G, 
a lot of research papers were written on them. And I tried to look into that also, Buddhism philosophy also. And also, what are some of the, the businessmen okay, are talking about sustainability? And, and I took one case of a successful entrepreneur. He's not a big-time entrepreneur, right? but he's a reasonably successful entrepreneur from tier two city, that is Belgaum. Okay. His name is Suresh Hundre. He's no more. Okay. But his perspectives on sustainability are accepted worldwide. The case was written on him by the Harvard professors. Okay. So I would like to spend some time on his thoughts as well on sustainability. Right. So that way we will be covering uh, the philosophical element on sustainability from various sources. What are they talking about? And what should be our future line of thinking when it comes to sustainability? So that's the agenda of mine today in this session, right? So please bear with me if I deviate here and there a bit, because I would like to start this session with a small video again by Ricky Cage. Uh, we at RVIM are big fans of Ricky Cage. We love him, right? He's such a, a big time celebrity, you know, award winner, global award winner from Bangalore, doing a lot of things on sustainability and environment. So I will play a small video of him, which is about man-elephant conflict man-animal conflict, man-elephant conflict, because nowadays we are seeing that elephants are running into towns and making the people life miserable. Okay, Why is it happening? Is there something going wrong? So I think we will get that feeler from that video. Then I will play again a small video on just the introductory part on sustainability. We went defining sustainability. What is that? What is the broader understanding of uh, the sustainability? And this video is from the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA video. It's an instructional video available on the net. So after uh, you know seeing those two videos, uh, I will start my session and we will discuss uh, various aspects on sustainability. Okay. So uh, let me uh, play the first video, uh, Noor. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. This is the oh, video of Anwar Mullah. Yeah. My son. Okay. So I'll play the first video. Uh, uh, is my slide visible, Noor? It is very clear, sir. Okay. Why is this also clear? Hi, sir. Okay. A video ka voice bhi thoda dekhe bolna mere ko, thik hai? Option. I think <clears throat> the message was uh, loud and clear. We need to understand that this universe, this world, doesn't belong to only the, the human race. It also belongs to all the other living creatures, including elephants. Okay. And in India, we, you know, worship elephants, you know, we see them as Lord Ganesha, right, on one hand. On the other hand, we torture them, right, as you see, using one elephant against the another to capture, to tame it, 
and doing all kinds of you know unwanted things uh, with the elephants and cutting down the forests where they should go what they should eat no one is worried okay and we don't want any conflict and if there is any conflict we just want to shoot them down right is that a sustainable practice is the question to the audience i want you all to ponder upon this question because every day in newspaper we talk about you know we see the news about the man animal conflict okay so why is this happening where it is going to lead us to just just think about these questions right and with this note i would like to again you know uh, uh, start i present you the another video right on which will you know kind of give you the uh, broad understanding i think we all know about it we have been hearing it but just to again reinforce what sustainability actually means let me play this video and i think uh, we will have that clear understanding <clears throat> hello sir yes uh, your playing video is not seen it's not coming no sir sorry sorry just let just let me with the full screen for me नहीं नोट है रहला Is it coming is now sustainability One yes, of the more common definitions okay. of sustainability used worldwide is from the UN Brundtland Commission They say sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs So put simply sustainability is about our kids and our grandkids How do we live today so that they can thrive and future generations can also have a good life? Our planet has many resources that we depend on for food, for housing, and many of those resources can replenish. You can cut down a tree and grow new trees. You can catch fish and there will be more fish. But that only works if you do it at a rate that these systems can replenish. We call that the replacement rate. You could think of it as a bathtub and you're draining the bathtub and filling the bathtub at the same rate. And if you do that, then the level of the water should be able to stay stable. We call that equilibrium. It's not that you're not using any resources, you are, but you're doing it at a rate that the systems are able to stay somewhat steady. Right now and over the past few decades what we're seeing is that we are consuming resources much faster than the replacement rate. and the result of that draining the bathtub faster than filling it is that those levels are going down we're seeing fisheries disappearing and other ocean life we're seeing forests disappearing of course you know everyone is familiar with the impacts of climate change and you know other impacts of this level of consumption you know plastics in the ocean all of these problems so ultimately sustainability is about understanding how all of this is connected understanding that when you make a decision to buy a smartphone you are impacting someone's life on the other side of the planet who's involved in mining the materials to put in that smartphone so sustainability is about systems thinking one of the other big frameworks that we use to talk about sustainability is the three e's in business we call that the triple bottom line some people call it the three legs of the stool and that's environment economy and equity and it's not just about understanding that we need to manage all of those it's understanding how they're connected so if you only look at short term economic profit then you're not going to end up with a thriving economy in the long term if you're only looking at conserving the environment without thinking about 
economics and understanding you know, how people are making their livelihood, you also may not end up with a thriving society. And if you aren't looking at equity, you're gonna end up with a few people that have most of the resources and many people who are hungry and not living a good life. And that's not really a successful human society either. So sustainability is really about addressing all of those and understanding the connections between them. Stop sharing my screen. So I. <clears throat> yeah, you should do this. <clears throat> I, this small video uh, brings in a lot of clarity as to what is this sustainability all about. Because a lot of discussions are happening around that. So it is important to have that clarity. <clears throat> So some of the points that I have noted down is it's about worrying about development without affecting future. Because, you know, I would, if I ask this question, how many of you think that our next generation, forget about the next to next generation, that the, just the next generation will have a good life? Okay. And I would... There won't be any surprises if, you know, majority of you will say, you know, absolutely uncertain, including me, I would say it's absolutely uncertain. And, you know, a recent uh, pandemic has made it more so clear, right? So, and it is all about maintaining equilibrium in the nature, in the universe, whatever you want to call, call prakruti, you can call is important. Right, And also, you know, many of uh, these things which are caused by human beings, unsustainable consumption, irresponsible consumption, excessive consumption, right? Think about it, right? If when one car is sufficient, why people are having uh, tens of cars, right? Just one example. Plastic pollution, right? everybody is talking about it. And you know, oceans are getting filled by plastics and plastic residues are being stored in fishes and uh, the other uh, aquaculture uh, products. Greenhouse gases, right? Look at Beijing episode, look at Delhi episode. Every now and then, you know, uh, there are episodes of the polluted uh, environment and city being shut for a week or two. And again, they are using all kinds of means to bring it back from the petrol to diesel, diesel to CPG, CPG to CNG, CNG to now electrical vehicles. But will that solve this problem? Ozone depletion, right? There won't be any surprises if, you know, for example, 20 years uh, before, Nobody was carrying a water bottle, okay? but today everyone has to carry water bottle because then the water was available in plenty, the drinkable water, portable water at every place, right? but is it so today? It is not. That's the reason we are carrying the, the packaged drinking water and same thing may happen with the oxygen, no surprises. Right. So again, that is because of the ozone uh, depletion. We may have to carry our own oxygen cylinders. And all this is leading to rising temperatures. Everybody is talking about it. Global, global warming, climate change. Right. A recent um, conference in Glasgow, right? COP26, wherein our prime minister also participated. They are talking about vision 2070, vision 2050, right? But are we going to be there? Are we be alive then by 2050? You know, is something which has to be pondered on, right? Because lots of changes may happen if we start, you know, doing the same thing for the next 30 years. We don't know where this world is going to end up. And like the video says, it's all about 
systems thinking, understanding how the entire ecosystem is connected with one another, right? And also the triple bottom line. Profits, economy, of course, important, but we can't ignore people, we can't ignore equity, we can't ignore their livelihoods, okay? And also, we can't ignore the planet, we cannot ignore the environment, we cannot ignore the nature. So how we are going to balance all these three, right? That is what is all about sustainability. So, but the, now the question arises, why are we talking about it? Okay, like I said, you know, loss of biodiversity and depletion of resources, consumption is more than the replenishment, which is leading to the greed, hatred, warfare, right? and ultimately you know, damaging the whole environment through global warming and climate change. And some of the, the causes are consumerism, all right? All corporates want to sell their products. Doesn't matter you know, what it takes. Right? Big becoming bigger and small becoming smaller, leading to the equity clashes in the society, right? It's going to cause a bigger harm, right? We are, you know, not yet understanding that, right? Unfair access to resources, people becoming greedy, right? There is sufficient resources available to fulfill one's need, but we can't fulfill everybody's greed. So that is where the problem is. We don't care attitude. Right? We want to keep our house clean, but we don't want to you know, worry about the neighborhood, worry about the village, the city, the state, the nation, and the world at large. Wasting natural resources. Just ask this question, how many of we are wasting water every day? Okay. Is there any way can I reduce this wastage? Because many times you know, I end up in quarreling uh, when I go to morning walk with the people who use the you know one inch pipe to wash their vehicles, and most of it, uh, you know, in most uh, occasions, the entire water is going back to trains. Okay. So you know something very very you know annoying. Wars and terrorism activities. Look at you know what Russia is doing, what China is doing, what they want to accomplish. Look at what is happening between the, the, the Israel and the Palestinian, you know, uh, fighting for a small strip of land, biological warfare. Again, you know, there are people talk about this corona being a biological warfare. We don't know, right? Cyber warfare. You know, recently, China entered into all of this kind. Russia is again very famous for that. They they you know take into control. The, the electrical grid networks, imagine, you know, if they take control of it and shut the power off, the entire state, entire nation, what it is going to do, okay? Then the extinction of species, you know, many species are no more, right? Are we worried about it? What will happen if that species is because every species play a definite role in balancing the ecosystem, starting from ants, butterflies, frogs, snakes. You know, there is a food chain, right? And uh, what will happen when we try to disturb this food chain? And also pollution. So the whole thing is ultimately is disturbing the harmony of the nature. Okay. So the entire objective of sustainability is to retain this harmony, to maintain this harmony, to, to enrich this harmony, to strengthen this harmony. But somewhere, you know, our efforts in the name of sustainability are not showing the desired results. Okay. We'll try to look into why it is happening so. 
right? So in nutshell, sustainability, the end goal is to attain harmony across the nature, across all the four orders of the nature, the physical order or the material order, which include all the soil, the mountain, the rivers, all that. Then there is a, a plant order, right? Flora order, right? Plants, grasses, trees, forests, all of that. And the third order is animal order, which we call as fauna order, right? Starting from every creature, elephant to the ant, okay? And the last order is human order. All these four orders have to be in balance. But is it in balance is the question we need to ask. And we will look into that. If it is not in balance, if it is not in check, why it is not in check? Why it is not in balance? All right? And if there is a disturbance, if there is no harmony, then there is no peace. Okay? So everybody on this planet, in this universe, want to live in peace, right? But they are not worried about sustainability. So is it going to happen? Looking at this link, that is sustainability leads to harmony across the nature, harmony across the nature will give us the peace, okay? <clears throat> So I was talking about these four orders, right? Just to bring some, some more points. Right? Bio order, which we call also call as the, you know, the plant order, if you want to call, then the physical order or the material order, where we talk about air, water, mineral, soil, etc. And the animal order, you know, animal, birds, and all the living creatures. And lastly, the human order. Look at the relationships between the two orders. Okay. So let's say bio order and the physical order. Okay. Bio order here is about plants, trees, grass, etc. Okay. Flora, we call that as flora. They use the water only that is required, they store the water, they don't waste the water, they give back oxygen to the, the physical order, consume carbon dioxide. So the relationship is mutually fulfilling. Okay. They take carbon dioxide, which is harmful for the physical order and replenish it with the oxygen. They help the physical order in retaining water through their root system, which we call as mycelium network, network of fungi through the roots. Okay. So everything is kind of balanced between those two. They both are self-regulated. Okay. And similarly, you look at the relationship or interconnectedness between the bio order and the animal order. Okay. Here the animals are not greedy. They don't, you know, hoard or store beyond, you know, certain limit. Okay. Through, you know, their uh, uh, dung and the urine, they again, you know, uh, I'm talking about animal order and the physical order, right? They again nourishes the soil. The birds help the, the bio order in the pollination, right? You know, in, in helping the bio order in coming out, to come out with the newer plants, trees through pollination. Butterflies, for example, help the forest to grow through pollinating. So here again, we see that it is mutually fulfilling, okay? You take care of me, I will not take care of you, right? Let's not harm one another. So that kind of broader understanding is there between these three orders, physical order, bio order, and animal order. 
and all are kind of self regulated right for example if you look at the wild animals like lions and tigers they kill whenever it is badly required right they don't keep on killing because the food is available and storing it in the in the cold chain they don't do it right once they kill a, a particular animal let's say deer they live on it for one full week not just themselves but also all the the other creatures whom we call as scavengers right all those animals for example vultures right wolves for example you know they also eat that uh, you know remaining food and make sure that nothing is being wasted but let us look at the human order and its relationship with the other orders okay and ask this question is it mutually fulfilling okay i would like to know the answers from the audience and you can unmute and you can talk or you can put in chat no problem what is your opinion right now that we got to know that the other three orders are having kind of a mutual fulfilling relationship they are kind of self regulated but what about the relationship with the human order are we self regulated is the human order self regulated are we mutually fulfilling with the other three orders right can i get some response as to what you people think is it possible uh, nur madam they can type it in the chat box in chat you can see sir. yes sir see in the chat box i am seeing the chat box anyway so we will take up during discussions i personally believe or think that you know our relationship with the other three orders is not fulfilling not mutually fulfilling right because of the greed that we carry we want to store for our lifetime not only for ourselves but our next generation next to next generation right so that is what is causing the damage okay it's not mutually fulfilling we believe in exploitation human believe in exploiting the physical order the animal order and the bio order we looked into that video case by ricky cage wherein you know we want to control the population of the elephants we want to tame them okay we don't want to let them free we don't want them to lead their own life okay and similarly we are cutting down the forests right not replenishing it at the rate which is required and similarly you know usage of water minerals for example soil for example quality of the air look at it right are we you know doing <clears throat> the things that are expected that are that are required to maintain this mutual fulfilling relationship with the other orders right and i have come to a conclusion that this is the reason for the disharmony lack of harmony in the nature which is causing unsustainability right so the only order which needs to be blamed is human order other three orders are self regulated they are mutually fulfilling between them except the human order <clears throat> so
So understanding the intricacies of the four orders is important and we should live accordingly, develop the mutually fulfilling relationship with the other three orders, right? And understand that harmony in the nature is achieved when there is a mutual fulfillment among all the four orders of the nature. When the other three orders are self-regulated and have a definite conduct, which is very important, okay? They know how to conduct themselves, the other three orders, except the human order, okay? The question is when the other three can be self-regulated and have a definite conduct, why not the human order? What is preventing us? Right? We need to ponder upon this question. And this is where the, the answer is somewhere we have not understood what we are. All right? We we sometimes, you know, uh, misunderstand our self as this body, okay? When the body and the self are two different entities, okay? So right understanding of the self is important, is the only way out to bring in this harmony and to ensure this sustainability, okay? This I am drawing it from the Universal Human Values course, which I underwent recently, and I just fell in love with that subject, okay? Because somewhere this understanding is missing, okay? You know, a self, for example, you know, looks at developing positive feelings like love, trust, respect, care, gratitude, affection, reverence, which is ultimately leading us to happiness. That is what is self is looking for. Self in the sense consciousness, our consciousness, our inner self, right? Now here, you know, uh, you know, uh, the nature of the soul is sat, chit, anand. We are truthful, we are eternal, and we are blissful. That is the nature of the self. Okay, that is not something you know which I am telling you from the dictionary. That is how what we are. We are supposed to be living happily twenty four by seven for every day throughout our life. We are eternal. We are blissful. But are we so? Are we happy throughout? Why, if you are not happy throughout 24 by 7 every day, then well, something is wrong. Okay, Somewhere we have not understood the self properly and giving undue importance to the body and assuming body itself as the soul. And trying to fulfill the needs of the body in terms of physical items, physical facilities. So here, it, there are three different things. Understanding self, developing positive feelings, and of course, physical facilities are important to take care of the body, but that is not everything. But we are giving undue importance to the body and ignoring the self, and not making an attempt to understand the self. Okay. So that is where the real cause is. And I'm saying this because all the philosophies which I'm going to discuss in the next 15-20 uh, minutes reinforce the same thing. Be it Bhagavad Gita, be it Buddhism philosophy, be it Patanjali Muni, right? be it Vedas, right? all talk about this. So, there has to be sustainability within self, like I said uh, during my open uh, opening remark, sustainability is not something which has to be confined or only corporate should be worrying about it. It has to percolate down to every individual. So, 
sustainability within self sustainability within family sustainability within society and sustainability within nature right so we have to cross layer by layer if i am not sustainable within if i am not happy within right then i cannot make my family happy and if my family is not happy if they are not naturally acceptable to one another and if there are no positive feelings and relationship between them then how can my society be in harmony okay and when the society is in not in harmony naturally the entire balance within the nature will gets disturbed okay so it has to be looked piece by piece layer by layer uh, like this right then only we can be able to do something to bring back that harmony which is kind of is kind of missing or or you know uh, getting disrupted at a at a fast pace so let's look at that point from the bhagavad gita the first one you know the ultimate uh, bible as to uh, which tells us how to lead one's life okay i have taken couple of shlokas from the bhagavad gita i one of my favorite uh, shlokas is uh, this 2.63 and 2.64 chapter 263 and 64th The first uh, shloka I will read it out for you. Dhyato vishayan kunsa sangas teesho pujayate sangat sanjayate kama ha kamat krodho bi jayate. Okay. So the meaning I have written there, right? Sensory perceptions. Okay. Attachment to senses. Okay. We want to please our senses. Okay. which causes attachment attachment lead to desire if desire is fulfilled we are happy okay if desire is not fulfilled it leads to anger okay simple okay so it is disturbing the inner harmony excessive attachment excessive sensory pleasures that you know today we are looking for then the next shloka 2.63 it says krodhod bhavati sammoha sammohat smruti vibhramah smruti bhramchat buddhi nasho buddhi nashat pranashyati right what this anger will do right anger will lead to clouding of judgment biasment in our judgments which again leads to bewilderment of memory okay namdu smruti will get bewildered disturbed which will lead to loss of intelligence we behave start behaving in an unintelligent manner okay which is not the desirable way which leads to falling of the self okay so one of the causes of sustainability like we discussed right the greed or the sensory perceptions the momentary pleasures that we are looking for is leading to the disturbance in the inner harmony of the self okay which is the root cause of the sustainability not being accomplishing sustainability in the nature then the next question again important shlokas and everybody you know knows about these shlokas who have been recited many many times what will happen if i don't bother about sustainability what will happen if i keep exploiting the animal order keep exploiting the plant order keep exploiting the physical order what is going to happen right then the krishna says यदा यदा ही धर्म से ग्लानिर भवति भारत अभ्युत्थानम अधर्म से तदात्मानम सृजाम्यम 
परित्राणाय साधूना विनाशाय च दुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापनाय संभवामी युगे युगे वेन दैट पॉइंट ऑफ इन्फ्लेक्शन रीचेस वेन थिंग्स बिकम अटरली अनमैनेजेबल कैटिक डिसहार्मनी विद इन दी नेचर एवरीबॉडी इज फाइटिंग विथ वन अनदर एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम i will take avatara is what he says and bring back that harmony that is what we call as you know pralaya anta helti right we call it as a jagat pralaya to bring back that harmony right so that is what he says but our job is to not to you know lead to that right we should you know get ourselves educated we should restore the balance between the four orders and ensure that entire nature is kept in harmony that is what is sustainability all about okay then you know let us look at from the shaiva philosophy right look at this image okay uh, there is shiva and parvati parvati's vahana is loin shiva's vahana is nandi okay and then there is ganesha and there is kartikeya vahana of ganesha is the mouse rat vahana of kartikeya is the peacock right and there are snakes around uh, shiva's neck right look at this right the prey of the lion is nandi prey of the snake is rat prey of the peacock is mouse but still then they are living fearlessly okay having fun with one another and living in harmony with one another that is what the philosophy is all about shaiva philosophy is all about okay and he wears runda mala okay saying that you know i take care of everyone be it sura be it asura rakshasa be it bhuta that is we living beings and be it preta preta means you know after death okay so the philosophy revolves around tyaga sacrifice vairagya that is detachment so that is what even in bhagavad gita shloka he was talking about you know detached attachment <clears throat> simplicity look at the, the the attire of shiva okay don't you think it is extremely simple right uh, not any kind of abushana or uh, what you call uh, the ornaments very very simple what he wears is just the rudraksha mala nothing else that is what simplicity and minimalism harmony with every other being like i explained this is what is coexistence okay everybody should be able to live with one another peacefully and then another philosophy you know shaiva is tapasya voluntary acceptance of austerity let us do something you know voluntarily for bringing back the uh, the harmony of the nature okay voluntary uh, the acceptance of austerity let me do something right this has to come in everybody's mind we all blame the government we all blame the municipal office we all blame the system we all blame the united nations we all blame the who right but what is that i am doing that's very important i am treating everyone equal right that is what samadrushyata anta helti right and here in this you know shaiva philosophy all are treated equally suras means devas asuras means rakshasas bhuta and preta everybody is treated equally he gave bone bone to ravana who was a rakshasa 
right? He also gave boon to all the devas. So ultimately, nirvana, kaivalya, moksha, the eternal bliss, all right, which is our true nature of the self. But somewhere we are not understanding that. Somewhere, you know, we get entangled in this body I am kind of a feeling. I am this body kind of an understanding when it is not really true. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the coming to the yoga darshana, which I was talking about, and uh, being a yoga instructor, a yoga enthusiast, you know, I believe the only way to ensure sustainability is every human being should adopt yogic way of life. Okay. Then we don't have to do anything else. Automatically, you know, you will ensure that sustainability is there throughout the ecosystem, environment. Nature is at harmony. Because Ashtanga Yoga Dali, <clears throat> we talk about Yama, right? That is universal standard, social ethics for harmony and peace. It starts with Yama. Okay. Again, it says Ahimsa. Right? We shouldn't torture anybody else, any other being. We don't have any right to torture any other being. Right? Forget about killing. I'm telling, you know, hating or, you know, or troubling or torturing any other creature. Then Satya, that is truthfulness. Astheya. Astheya here is stealing. Okay. Look at it this way, right? Aren't we stealing from our next generation? to fulfill our desires by causing imbalance in the nature. Right? And then the Brahmacharya. Right? How do we lead our life is important. Okay? Brahmacharya is not something you, know, you shouldn't marry or something like that. It is the way we lead our life. It should be in tandem with the nature's harmony. And lastly, it talks about Aparigraha means over possessiveness right when i when my need is of one car i should be happy with one car i shouldn't get obsessed and you know have 20 30 cars so by doing that i am causing damage i am creating disharmony in the nature so that is why it is yama right it is a restraint. We shouldn't do that. Okay. Then he also talks about niyamas, okay. which are personal ethical practices and observance for harmony and peace. Ultimately, like I said, sustainability is to ensure harmony and a harmony will only give us the peace. Okay. So there he talks about shaucha, cleanliness, santosha, happiness, Contentment. You know, we should be happy with whatever that we have. Contentment is important. Okay. Then the tapas, sacrifice. Swadhyaya, knowing oneself. Again, I am coming back to self. Understanding the real self is nothing but swadhyaya. I am the Ishwara Pranidhana. And believing that. You know, nature is the biggest God. Nature is the only God. And even in Bhagavad Gita, he clearly says, right? You know, you can see me. Krishna says, you can see me in the uh, Ashwatvruksha, for example, he says, right? Uh, you know, I am the manifestation in the form of Ashwatvruksha. Again, similarly, he says, in mountains, I am the you know, uh, something he says, and then, you know, in animals, I am this, in everything, I am that, right? In Nadi, I am this. So he's saying that. Okay? And then the next, the six stages are about asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. The ultimate goal of samadhi and the dhyana is to know the self. Okay? So here again, I am connecting it back to 
the root cause that is causing sustainability, disturbance in sustainability. So understanding yama and niyama are paramount. If we everybody understand those, I think you know we can address the sustainability issue uh, much much uh, in an easier way. And similarly, you know, in Taitre Upanishad, they talk about Panchakosha, right? We most often, you know, many people, they think that we are this cross body. But that Upanishad says, what you are seeing is just one layer, one sheath. And that is Annamaya Kosha. There are four more layers inside. The next layer is Pranamaya Kosha where the prana is flowing inside your body. Prana means breath, right? The, the prana vayu, which keeps us alive, right? Uh, you know, for example, how, you know, the doctor will check whether patient is alive or dead. He will check the pulse, right? So that is where he is confirming that he is dead, okay? Otherwise, body is intact. But... Somewhere the pranamaya kosha is dead. Okay? But then third layer, inner layer is manomaya kosha. Okay? Mind, mind sheet, mental sheet. Everything starts in mind. The greed also starts in mind. Attachment also starts in mind. Desires also start in mind. All right? So we have to uh, you know, bring that under our control. That is one of the layers. Right? And we can make it very powerful also. Then the next layer is Vijnanamaya Kosha. Intelligence, wisdom, sheet and the head, layer and the head. And then in the end, you know, like we said, we are Satchit Ananda. Right? So Ananda Maya Kosha, which is our cause, causal body and the head. So Sharira Trayadali, they divide into three bodies, gross body, subtle body, causal body. But most often, many people get stuck in the first layer itself. Okay? When we are supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, the whole objective here is to, to, you know, travel from the outer world to the inner self. But we get stuck in the outer world itself. We don't even start the journey towards inner self understanding the real self. What actually uh, I am looking for? I am looking for happiness. I am looking for satisfaction. I am looking for contentment. Where I will find it? How I will find it? Right? Those kind of questions we need to ask and understand the, the real self. This is part of the Panchakosha philosophy. Buddhism, right? We all know, right? He also talks about the interrelatedness, right? Like I was talking about the four orders, right? He, uh, you know, the Buddha also talks about, you know, human depends on nature and nature depends on humans, right? Harming one part of this whole is the same as harming all of it. Okay? So therefore, people should learn to live simply and in harmony with the nature. The whole of the environment will benefit. So, you know, we need to understand this. Then the mindfulness. Right? Most often, we are not mindful of our actions. Right? So, we should, you know, cultivate this habit of uh, being mindful. What it will lead to. Right? <clears throat> Before cutting a tree, we should, you know, we should just contemplate what is going to be the action of or the end result of this action of me cutting a tree. Okay. So if you are mindful of the effects of your actions on the world, I, uh, that only is the effective way to avoid causing damage to the nature and other living creatures. Okay. Most often, uh, you know, the problem arises because we are not mindful. And the third one, compassion, entire Buddhism philosophy revolves around compassion right? towards everybody, every living creature, because we have to believe that all life forms are special, not just human beings. 
And even in Jain, Jainism philosophy, when they walk, you know, they make sure that they are not killing even an ant. Okay. They wear mask all the time, just to ensure that, you know, the breath doesn't kill any bacteria or viruses. Right. So mindful they are, so compassionate they are. Right? So we need to understand. And that is what is Ahimsa all about. You know, ahimsa doesn't mean that we should not, you know, for example, eat a meat or something. Right? But you know, whenever it is required, only at that point of time. Not making business out of it. Right? So somewhere, you know, we have to think about all that. And lastly, he also talks about enlightenment. Knowing self is the ultimate goal that only can bring back the sustainability and maintain harmony. Gandhian philosophy, very interesting, right? He also talks about two things, Satya and Ahimsa. He also talks about the sense of inner peace and well-being. He was, you know, never in the favor of war. The sense of tranquility, that inner happiness. Okay, he is important. Look at the life of Gandhi. So simple he was, right? And his entire, you know, philosophy was revolving around sustainability, self-sustainability. As a nation, we should be self-reliant. We should be self-sustainable. That is what Khadi movement is all about, right? Manufacturing our own cloth for our own use. Right? Such a big thought. Right? And harmonious uh, relationships. He was having a you know goat, it seems. And whenever he was in a meeting, doesn't matter how serious uh, the meeting was, at right at three o'clock, he used to go to feed his goat. Okay. So uh, you know, mindful he was, so caring he was, right? So balance in nature is important, right? And at times, you know, if the nature is not responding, you know, as a as a conscious human being, we should forgive the nature, right? And then working for social justice. That is what the Gandhian philosophy also conveys on the sustainability. Then I was talking to you about the tribal philosophy, right? You know, we think, you know, we so-called the literate people only know what is sustainability and come out with the doctrines on sustainability, right? No, look at their lifestyle. Right? So simple it was, so simple living, as you see in the images, bare minimum requirements, right? And even the sustainable hunting. You know, those tribes, Onge tribe, they kill only one animal in a week and they live on it. And not only themselves, they also feed to their, the, the fellow creatures like vultures, birds, the scavengers, right? sustainable agricultural practices. Right? They never used the machines, right? An entire thing was you know, in sync, in harmony with the nature. Look at the today's agricultural practices. Right? And in my native place where I come from, that is Gulbarga district, which I got irrigated. Right? People now, they are taking two and a half crops every year. The two same crop, paddy or the cotton. What is going to happen to soil? After 10 years, it will become infertile. But nobody is worried about it. Okay. Is it a sustainable agricultural practice? I don't think so. Right? So they are more smarter than us. That is what these images convey us. They used to store the food grains. Never used to go hunger. Never used to beg anybody for their livelihood, enough milk, enough food, live happily, had their own shelter, 
and you know peaceful living what else you want okay so we need to learn lot of things from these people also and this particular tribe you know so many people died during tsunami of 2004 and this andaman nicobar was kind of a the 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 you know uh, what do you call the main place where this tsunami occurred not even one person died they were so intelligent you know they could predict that tsunami is going to come they all moved to the higher planes and safeguarded themselves this is not me telling you this is the literature that is i am trying to to convey to you put it across right then i was talking to you about the suresh hundre okay i am biggest fan of him right and he started very humbly with a very small capital less than a lakh and today it's around 500 plus crore company it's a polyhedron group of companies it has created its own niche in the hydraulic engineering space in the world right when china is exporting to all the countries china is importing from polyhedron group of companies the hydraulic walls even today okay uh, he is catering to the entire world some of his uh, you know thoughts on sustainability run large scale industry like a small scale industry okay be flexible be agile be lean be slim to win the competition and if you run ssi small scale industry like a large scale industry competition will kill you such an amazing thought right and he called one of his plants as temple of ethics this i am telling you about during 1990s right imagine at that point of time he is calling his first factory as temple of ethics right and he says one can be ethical and still run a successful continuously growing and prospering business right he never paid even one rupee bribe to anyone right and his factory doors were open 24 by 7 by 365 any officer can come walk in any time and check the record so transparent so clean the polyhedron group was the second unit he called it as business ashram again think about it right and he says it's a place for grooming karma yogis again going back to the philosophy so based on experiment of integrating spirituality with business to produce excellent results so somewhere the business has to connect with the spirituality that is what is missing today that is what you know the business houses are not understanding spirituality so that is where they are causing lot of damage to the nature and his definition of uh, peace or wealth very you know i really admire this equation wealth equals to money plus peace okay then according to this equation money is wealth minus peace okay <laughs> it's just a piece of paper and which is going to uh, you know take out your peace so don't uh, be after money be after wealth money loaded onto a wagon of peace is wealth okay very very profound equation you know one can do phd on this equation and that is what the sundresh philosophy was and he says seven sutras to liberate from fear and attain peace He is uh, be spiritual, moral, ethical, honest, transparent, simple, and disciplined. Such an amazing thought. Such an amazing thought. All right. And he says, "I am proud. I know I am proud because uh, you know the ten reasons uh, which I think I was proud of is I was proud of and to be an Indian. I know my responsibilities and uh, as an enlightened citizen." i am an honest taxpayer i create wealth for the nation i have not paid one rupee bribe in last 25 years i have not generated one rupee black in last 25 years i have not paid one rupee in last uh, again i think it was repeated i spend on an average 2 hours per day for social work 
and I work only for eight hours to fulfill my professional obligation. I know him personally, and this is how he was leading his life. Okay. And even the income tax commissioner used to treat like any other person. There is no, you know, differential treatment for him. So that kind of an amazing personality he was, and he could build such an organization. Again, he talks about the four forces of sustainability, values, ethics, social responsibility. The fourth component is important, spirituality. Okay, So understanding the self, understanding the relationships is extremely important. Right? And again, you know, all our philosophies are talking about this. Right? And lastly, you know, Upanishads, you know, they talk about Vasudaiva Kutumbaka. In, in Maha Upanishad in Rugveda, uh, this is what he is talking about. One is a relative, the other stranger, say the small minded people, right? narrow minded people. The entire world is a family. Vasudaiva Kutumbakam uh, says the magnanimous soul, live the magnanimous soul. Right? So Vasudaiva Kutumbakam is the, the philosophy we should imbibe and you know respect one another one another so that everybody lives in harmony right and similarly you know uh, okay. this is the prayer again very nice prayer sanga chadvam samvadhadvam samvo manasi janata deva bhagam yatha purve sanya nana upasate may you move in harmony Speak in one wise, in one wise, let your minds be in agreement, just as the ancient gods shared their portion of sacrifice. What an amazing prayer, right? So similarly, this uh, continues in the, the prayer which talks about, may our purpose be the same. May we all be of one mind. In order for such unity to form, I offer a common prayer. And similarly, in the end, may our intentions and aspirations be alike so that common objective unifies us all. That is sustainable growth. <clears throat> in the end, the, you know, again, it was uh, said by Vivekananda. He says about Western dynamism and efficiency combined with the Indian spirituality can make the best management system in any sphere of human activity. And he also means the, the sustainable development. Right? So with that note, I think because of the paucity of time, I will not play this video. This is again a Ricky Cage, uh, a nice to watch video. You can watch it. It's available on the internet. It's called Wildlife of Karnataka. Just to give you that feeling of the connectedness with the nature, right? So with that, I thank you all for the patient listening. I think I didn't had a chance to interact with you all because it's kind of virtual and I have to cover so many philosophies. So that is where, you know, I couldn't uh, talk uh, personally one-on-one. -on -one. If there are any questions, I would like to take it. Uh, Anita Amendan? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, sir. That yeah. was very insightful, very good setup, a lot of learning. That box is filled with application, sir. Thank you so much for the session. So now I request we take up some questions now. I request. Sure, sure. Uh, I am I am okay with you know staying here for another 15-20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. No problem. If there are questions, please take. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, thank you for the session. It was a wonderful session. Uh, it is a connection between the Indian philosophy and the sustainability. You have brought a correlation between the two. Uh, that's the feedback that we are getting from the participants. A uh, few questions are there uh, which are connected and there are many more that the uh, participants are posting. Uh, let me go with the first question, sir. The first yeah, question sure. is, uh, from Indranil, he says, uh, Sir, as we know, yoga is basically a way to understand self conscious and life. How do we relate it to yoga and environment health? 
yoga and relation to environment health sir okay see that is what you know if you look at the ashtanga yoga yoga we simply many times we take it as yogasana no it is not okay yoga is understanding yama niyama first right what should be my the ethical uh, practices observances okay so that way you are uh, you know directly connecting yourself with the nature okay for example ahimsa aparigraha right all this you know you are connecting back to the nature you are not disturbing the nature you are in sync with the nature that is what is important today right that is where yoga will guide you in that direction for example you know many people today the problem is anxiety okay. how can i address this because of anxiety you know for no reasons i pick up quarrels how can i address that and it is causing lot of disturbance okay so that is where through yoga we can bring back anxiety under control and give it a free thought intellect thought and take the right decisions right so that is where yoga is part of the nature okay yoga is not something very very different or all together separate it's part of the nature it the way you very word yoga means connecting with the universal nature sambandh jodna hai by the individual self with the the cosmic self universal self okay so that is what it is yoga is all about. yes sir uh, thank you we have an a second question from uh, mrs uh, aruna desh pande uh, she says sir with technology dominating and commercial connectivity the younger generation is unable to understand the indian mindset mm -hmm. uh with the technology okay. dominating and commercial connectivity uh, the mm -hmm. young generation is un unable to understand the indian mindset probably the indian philosophy yeah yeah that is true that is where you know as a parent it is our job to bring back them to the indian philosophy right because we can't stop them from using gadgets because even schools you know they are saying you know you need to attend the classes on the smartphones so we can't tell them don't use smartphones but somewhere we have to find some interesting ways and means to pull their interest back into the the indian uh, philosophy spirituality that is the biggest uh, uh, role a parent has to play now okay and of course you know it is not that they will not be interested they are very interested only thing is we need to nurture develop that interest in them tell them lot of stories of mahabharata ramayana you know i talked about bhagavad gita so many you know interesting stories through them we can draw their attention towards these indian spirituality context yes sir thank you uh, this is from uh, nabi rasul uh, sustainability is it really possible because people generally talk about bill gates ambani and warren buffets mm -hmm. i know the uh, big this one so he is asking whether sustainability is possible why it is not impossible okay when everybody will get a deeper understanding of the self who am i what is that i am looking for and where i can get that because very simple everybody is looking for happiness but he is searching for that in a wrong place in a material world okay when it is there inside ourselves okay so only thing is we need to bring this awareness bring this uh, spiritual context all right and i think uh, you know if we do that then the root cause is addressed then things will fall in place and automatically you know we can regain the whatever sustainability that we have lost so i don't see that as a problem but definitely you know the way we are 
taking on heading on with the issues you know sticking on to the the material facts and not willing to know beyond the body context then i think it is very difficult it will yeah. remain as an you know what you call a theory that's all yes sir correct sir yeah. there are uh, there's a question from um, professor richa uh, kathuria the question is how to balance modern ambition with yogic life for young generation how to balance, balance? modern ambition with okay. yogic life for younger generation i think you know i based you know as long as my interaction with the younger generation goes they are very smart much much smarter than what we are they know what to expect out of life how to get it out of life you know only thing is we have to put them in the right channel right direction and you know put them into some uh, uh, nice uh, yogic uh, sessions yogic way of life yogic way of living practicing yoga day in day out it is not that once in a week we go to some ashram and practice some yoga asana that is not yoga is all about so day in day out like we maintain our vehicle uh, we should maintain ourselves right if we do that i think you know it's possible they are very smart the next generation younger generation is too smart yes sir yeah. uh thank you sir uh, there's a question from professor suresh kumar he says whether government is the major obstacle for sustainability on one side they promote and tell preserve trees on the other side they cut down the trees likewise they support ashram constructed by a popular godman in tamil nadu where mm. it was illegal uh, where it was legal dispute constructed Ill illegally considered as the elephant corridor that led to a man animal conflict and was inaugurated by the current central government so these are the examples been given so basically he is asking whether government is a major obstacle for sustainability see that is the you know problem with us we always you know pinpoint the mistakes of others you know we try to blame the government we try to blame the system we try to blame the world order right but somewhere you know it's okay you know constructing an ashram actually we should not be constructing that ashram but as a as a as a good citizen of this country what did i do to stop that all right i i don't want it to be constructed right that's what uh, professor suresh is trying to say right yes sir yes. government has you know uh, come uh, forward and built that ashram, ashram. right yes, that to in the elephant corridor isn't it yes which was not required they would have built it any anywhere else okay but let's assume that the government did that but what did i do did i raise that issue in the public forum did i wrote about it in the newspaper did i wrote about it in any social media i garnered support from the other social media people who are active on that social media or made it into a some kind of a movement because you know i, I want the elephants not to you know uh, be blocked i care towards elephants right so that is where you know we should ask ourselves what did i do instead of saying it didn't do its job world order was you know, reckless they are hopeless right united nations and then all those things we talk about right so somewhere you know they remain as the what i call two circles you know circle of influence and circle of concern Right. and the circle of concern is all these issues which suresh uh, kumar uh, sir was pointing out i am concerned about it right it's okay but what did i do to address that concern rather than that let me work on my circle of influence where i can bring in some influence right. 
so having uh, you know worrying about circle of concern is okay but what is more important is taking some concrete actions uh, based on your circle of influence whom you can influence can i influence go and meet the district uh, commissioner and give a requisition give an appeal all right so something which is uh, that i can do is what is important yes sir thank you sir there's a question from dr s preeta uh, she says on one side we encourage children to perform well and reach greater heights on the other side we talk about minimalism or minimization what is your take on it that's very very uh, that, that's precisely you know uh, is our uh, indian mindset okay middle class mindset i would rather say you know i uh, you know for example it is something like this you know uh, uh, which people say right mm. <clears throat> we kind of conflict ourselves okay on the one hand we say you know minimalism on the other hand you know we boost their uh, you know attachment towards luxury items right when they need one pair of shoes we give them 100 pairs of shoes or three pairs of shoes right? why is that we are doing that okay? yes so somewhere it is in our hands i think right uh, we you know all talk about gandhi but we don't want everyone to lead the life of gandhi you know that's what it is okay so somewhere you know we shouldn't uh, conflict ourselves with the kids take a stand and stick to it and even if they are not happy that's fine that's momentary the kids may feel like what you know my father and mother are very stingy right they don't you know providing me enough dresses or but that's okay later they will realize that it was for their good so we need to stand as role models first ourselves then they will observe us and then develop that automatically we don't have to do anything beyond that that's my personal take yes sir thank you sir there's a question from professor vaishnavi r uh, mm -hmm. the question is what role can the indian education system and the academicians play to create inquisitiveness among the young, youngsters uh, also the uh, continuation of that what type of amendments in academic curriculum can drive enthusiasm in youngsters to shift shift their focus on learning and practicing vedas yoga or any restoration of indian culture yeah i think aict has taken up several initiatives you know during my presentation i talked about universal health values course floated by the aict uhv1 universal health values 1 universal health values 2 and they are making it mandatory for all the engineering students it's a one credit or i think it's a two credit course right so like that you know for example at rvim in our new autonomous curriculum we brought in a two credit subject called uh, you know health and wellness okay through which we are driving this philosophy of knowing self right which is the root cause of the you know unsustainable development so like that you know every institution can think in a different manner in an innovative manner bring in some added uh, certification courses bring in as a yoga practicing course small certification course in yoga and somewhere all these little things bringing all these little things into your curriculum will address this gap okay and later i think once this awareness is created this will become part of the curriculum itself we don't have to do anything so till that time it is our job to bridge this gap like i said i fell in love with that course universal human values course fantastic course right it was more on the self realization it was less on delivering lecture or something it was like you know asking ourselves what do we think about a particular issue very interesting course i recommend all of you to it's a free course it's a one week course okay and but you know you have to attend 90% of the sessions 
there is no shortcut there are a lot of assignments and but you will really enjoy it right so that is the first step that you can uh, take yeah universal human values one and two and uh, you know it is i think 80th batch is going on now they want to do 100 batches and then they may stop so every now and then you know they uh, send the notification on these dates this is open please register okay yes, you have sir. to take a leave and uh, do it very interesting very nice course yes sir Thank it's all you. about understanding real self that course is all about understanding the real self which is the again root cause for unsustainable development because we have not understood ourselves okay yes sir thank you uh, another question sir mm -hmm. uh, this is from professor s mathur when mm -hmm. everything is written in a scriptures for sustainability then why is it that we are forgetting it and now we are again going back to our asian scriptures mm -hmm. yeah somewhere you know this colonial rule british people when they took over our country they want they didn't wanted us to you know follow those scriptures and again lead a balanced life a good life that is where the western philosophy was brought in the western education system was brought in because that is the only way they thought we can uh, you know uh, keep india under check otherwise these people you know will not allow us to rule right so that is where all those developments happened but anyway nevertheless today again you know it's kind of a revolution iit kanpur has taken up this wonderful initiative and started with this center called uh, you know uh, what is that uh, in india knowledge center or sorry indian uh, knowledge system iks indian knowledge system right so you know very amazing center and again they are you know connecting us back to the scriptures back to the vedas back to the our indian philosophies okay so somewhere we have to again you know go to the roots that is what is important somewhere we have lost the way but it's okay now that we know we have lost the way we should go back to our roots and that is where academicians can play a vital role helping people to connect them back to their roots yes sir yeah. uh, uh, people uh, the participants also want to know where do this universal human value course is available is, is it in any on the aict aict mm -hmm. portal like i said they want to do 100 batches and they already done 80 batches there is no limit on the number of participants there is no registration fee but it is very rigorous let me tell you this up front it is not like you know you keep your video on audio on and go anywhere and complete that is not possible lot of quizzes assignments 90% attendance and uh, the, the quizzes every day there is one assignment so like that it's a very very good course i recommend it's available on aict portal developed yes. by iks indian knowledge system center for indian knowledge system from iit kanpur yes sir uh, coming to the next question this question is from professor shweta singh theoretically we all know about sustainability and its models its importance but how can we practically implement in our college course or educational platforms yeah knowing theory is one part right but bringing that into practice is somewhere we have to educate the businesses okay so that is where as a consultancy assignments working with the companies right asking them educating them on the sustainability issues making them aware of those issues okay is what is important not teaching the theories to the student anyway you know by the time they join the companies they can also bring in some good changes but as a professor as a leader we can always undertake some consultancy assignments research projects and make them you know aware as to your actions actions by a company 
has caused what kind of damage? Through a research project, through a research publication. Okay. So that is what is needed. All right. And that is what we all should do it. Any theory for that matter, right, will remain a theory if we don't act on it. Right. So here we can start from our own institution, neighboring industries, neighboring institutions, educate them, create awareness about that. And there's a triple bottom line philosophy. And even this ESG philosophy, which we are talking about, right? That is environment and the society and the, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, ESG philosophy, which we call governance, right? Environment, society That's and governance. governance. We need to create that governance structure. Okay, to bring in the required changes. That is what is missing. That is the reason ESG is thriving today. All the companies are talking about ESG. Uh, they used to talk only about E, environment separately, and the S separately, society, and nobody used to talk about governance. And now that, you know, all the three are given due importance, you know, things will happen, I think, you know, because uh, otherwise it is going to be uh, deteriorating for the entire human race, not for that particular company or the country or the community, but for the entire human race. So that is why all this COP26 conference happened in Glasgow, right? Almost all countries participated and shared their vision for 2050 and 2030, 2070. Narendra Modi went there and said, we will become carbon neutral by 2050. Okay. Yes. So things are happening. It is not that things are not happening. We need to speed it up. We need to accelerate that. That is our role as a teacher, as an academician, as a researcher, as a consultant, as a trainer. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I think... We have come to the end of the uh, question, sir. Uh, yeah. If anybody want to raise the hand and ask a question, that's also fine. Yeah. You know, last one or two, you know, you can give that chance. And so that they don't feel like, you know, we are left out. We are not being heard. So, yeah. If it is okay with you. So, yeah. yeah. Any, any other uh, query from the participants? Just want to, you know, share there as to how it was MDP throughout and you know any comment there any any scope for improvement and what other subject you want us to you know uh, dwell upon in the next uh, mdp any of those issues please feel free and you know madam will unmute you if you raise the hand yeah. uh, you can put in the chat also so no problem uh, so there's a question uh from uh, Dr. Bala. Mm. Uh, the question is, uh, uh, this is from Dr. Bala Koteshwar. Dear sir, one side we are racing with technology, advanced gadgets leading to depleting of our natural resources. Whereas on the other side, uh, we are emphasizing on sustainability, how mm. to strike a balance. Yeah. See, this is where we need, we need to, I personally think we need to use the technology for the right cause. To address the sustainability issues, we should use technology, not to exploit the nature. Okay, what we are doing is, we are using the technology to exploit the nature, not to conserve it, not to preserve it, not to harness it. But same technology can also be developed and used for preserving the harmony for bringing back that harmony, right? So it is not that technology can only be used for, you know, uh, negative reasons. It can also be used for positive reasons. So that is where we need to, you know, think differently, change our attitude towards technology, use it for good, use it for good. Yeah. Yes, sir, it's, thank it's you. It's my take, yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank there are so no much. questions. No Thank questions. you all for your patient listening. 
and a lot of interesting questions. It made me also to think, all right? And definitely, you know, as a team, uh, we will host the next uh, MDP in a short time. And hopefully it is going to be related to the sustainability. Maybe, you know, we are planning to uh, do it on the corporate social responsibility. I'm just thinking because it is linking with this uh, MDP on sustainability. So nevertheless, please, uh, you know, um, uh, inform us. So mail, us mail us and definitely we'll try and work out on that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you being here and enriching our participants' knowledge on sustainability from philosophical perspective. So, really, it was lot to learn, and all the participants have got the new perspective on sustainability. So, we really thank you for that, sir. On behalf of the Institute, Army Institute of Management, and all the participants present here, I take this opportunity to thank you, sir, for, your, for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with all of us and also providing this opportunity for me to conduct this uh, management development program and entertain, helping the participants throughout India <coughs> and learn their knowledge on sustainability. And I really thank you for that, sir. Yes. Thank, you, thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank sir, you. Sir, you have said about uh, UHB, no? So yeah. I have completed SIP and uh, oh. induction program and from Monday 31st, I am having that. Part one. Yeah, very nice it is. <laughs> will it be a nice sir. meeting, sir? I am a yeah, member. Then you, sir. We learned many things. <laughs> thank I you, am a member there. <laughs> Honorary member, I am there. I am having <laughs> meeting, weekly yeah. meeting, Saturday, oh, Sunday evenings. Very nice. So yes, then, then I think you will appreciate what I was trying to convey. Yes, yes. Because the gap is in understanding self. So. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, true. And that uh, research incentive uh, process, no, I got the amount uh, yesterday mm -hmm. or day before. You have to go to your portal and register it. Yes, yes. It is in both the languages, English and Hindi. And Hindi, yes. And you can I do one nine two, board, then board. also you can become a teacher also. Yes, if you're yes, really yes, interested, sir. you can yes, become sir. a teacher also because this they are doing it as a movement. Right? Because I they want to bring started. it. Yeah. I've already started teaching, but now exams are there now from 15th of February. That is why we are stopped for okay. some time. Okay. Again, we'll continue after the exams. Very that is nice. SIP induction program for students. SIP Tunku, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. What's your good name, madam? You said Dr. Ruby. Oh, Ruby very Chai. nice. Very nice. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you very much for your MVP. Yeah, yeah. My all pleasure. My pleasure. All the Thank you so much. Were very nice. Thank you so I much. I already mentioned in the chat box. Oh, yes, very sir. nice. Very nice. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you. I thank all the participants for being very enthusiastic and being with us all the time. All the four days you are active, all the four days you have asked so many questions and you have added value to the learning. Hope this uh, MDP has enriched your knowledge in the sustainability concept and all of you will practice the sustainability in your life, both in personal as well as in uh, professional life. That is the objective of our MDP, the Management Development Program. Hope you will be doing that. So with that, I really want to thank you for being a wonderful audience and following all our instructions and making our sessions very live. So as I was telling, very soon we'll be launching the new program. So wherein you can again work on and participate and enhance your learning. So then regarding your certificate, we are processing it. Next four days, all of you will be getting the certificate based upon your participation. So any doubt, any clarification to be made, you can please reach out to us. All of you have your mobile numbers, right? Our email ID, all the participants are having. So please feel free to contact us, get connected to us for any post MDP queries or any post MDP thing. So if anything you wanted, please reach out to us. So till then, thank you so much once again, all of you. Joining, yes, thank you. Yeah, great, great job done, Noor, Anita, and the entire team. Right, wonderful. Lot of effort has gone in. 
big and hearty congratulations to you both and the thank team. Thank you, sir. Thank you Vanshi so much. Vanshi and everybody who was involved in this. Thank you so from, much. From participants onwards, sir. Hmm? From participants also saying same. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you, team. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Sujay, sir. Thank you so thank much. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah.